This is Daniel Poppy, host of How to Write Good. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Do you need some extra motivation in your life? Are you looking to be inspired? If so, then look no further than the Good God Company. At the Good God Company, their mission is to create and clothe all loving humans with their unique, inspiring, and beautifully designed t-shirts. All of the products from the Good God Company are equally designed to motivate you and improve your life. From their mugs, workout tanks, to eye-appealing shirts and sweatshirts. Learn more about their renowned products by visiting thegoodgodcompany.com. That's thegoodgodcompany.com. The Good God Company is proud to support public house media. The The Good Good God God Company. Company. I'm I'm feeling feeling good. good. I'm the Greg. And I am Dave Show. We host the Greg and Dave Show on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out our show, The Greg and Dave Show, where we talk about strange, bizarre, and sometimes just downright quirky news stories that you may not have heard about. A new show comes out every Wednesday. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. And hey, thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. There was a time when women lived where they felt pressured to be good and look good for their men. Now, it seems, we live in a time where women are constantly being reminded of how not beautiful they are. Whether it's the media or themselves or their friends or social media or anybody else, looking like, dressing like, being like a certain person is often turned out to be the right way or the wrong way, and women are often being throated with looking the same or not looking the same as somebody else. We see billboards, television screens, magazines, phones, other types of advertisements everywhere that are telling us that we're not good enough. This morning, I'm gonna talk to you about how you are beautiful, you are strong, and you are capable of doing so much more. This morning on Choose to Rise, welcome to Public House Media. I am so glad that you're here. Uh, We are super pumped today to be coming live to you right here and public house media and we're brought to you today by the good god company where their goal is to create t-shirts and other creative consumer products that have beautiful awesome inspirational motivational and spiritual messages that you can share your faith with others and with their great designs and logos so go check out their facebook page or their google um, or google the good god company and check out how you might be able to get some of their gear in your mailbox coming soon Again, today we're going to be talking about how you are beautiful and you are strong and you are capable of being so much more than you ever imagined. We're going to talk about seven reasons why you feel ugly in life and how you can fix that. I have been there. I know exactly what some of these things are, and we are definitely want to get rid of those unrealistic expectations in life, the pressure that they come with, and the the perception that we are anything less than what we were created to be. So you see, everyone is beautiful. Everyone is beautiful in their own way. Everyone was created for more. Everyone was created with abundance and beautiful um, skills and abilities. And we all have something to be proud of. Every woman has their favorite physical feature about themselves. And every woman has something that they're not necessarily a fan of. But who put those reasons there? Why do we feel so ugly? Well, I got number one thing is probably the media. (laughs) Real shocker, right? Personally, I can't stand media. I tend to not watch the news. I don't listen to any of the, um, like, other negative things out there that's constant. Um, I don't look at magazines. I don't look in advertisements. I try not to go anywhere but my own feed where I try to fill it with positive people and I listen to podcasts that give me positive information and I try to fill my heart and my mind with things that are positive, uplifting content and not things that are false information and emotional ridden that try to get people to be brainwashed and believe that they are an image of what society thinks is beautiful and sexy and not what they really have created to be. So because of all of that stuff, all those seeds that are being planted in women's minds was very young to very old. Um, See, all these things that have been planted in our hearts and our minds that as a society, we believe that they now are true. Isn't that crazy? So my advice, 
completely. Understand that they are building, that we are building a society this way, but don't take it personal. But don't try to, um, don't feel like you have to succumb to the things that the society is always telling you, that you have to look a certain way, that you have to wear your hair a certain way, that you have to do this a certain way, that you have to say these certain things. Because don't don't try to be the mold, break the mold, be you. God created you as a certain individual. He created you with a certain way of living and he wants you to live your life in the best way possible. You are strong enough and, and capable enough to do things on your own. Hopefully I can spark something in your head today and throughout this podcast, since something that you can, are gonna be able to take with you so when you go to that local store to try an acute dress, when you go into your social media and see other people sharing their highlight reel, when you go out and are watching TV and see these advertisements of appealing and sexually are appropriate women and to all to some sort all women are beautiful in their own way and whether you're big, small, wide, big chested, little chested, big butt, little butt, blonde, red hair, black hair, white hair, you get my drift. You are beautiful. You are strong. You are capable. And it doesn't matter what society or the media thinks is perfect. You are perfect in your own way. So get out of the that headspace and into a reality of where you are beautiful. Number two, you get out what you put in. You, yep, it's time to look in the mirror. There are so many women that don't like the way they look, maybe their weight, maybe their features of their face, maybe your hair, maybe your butt, you name it. Women, why? Why are women so critical of ourselves? How, you know, it's mostly because media puts things in our head that we're not perfect enough and that we have to pick ourselves apart. But the most things that we don't like about ourselves, we can change. It's ourself. It's our body. It's our mindset. It's our feelings. We have control over that. We don't have control over what other people think of us. We don't have control over what other people do or say, but we have 100% over control over us. We get to decide whether we're fat. We get to decide whether we're beautiful. We get to decide whether we want to say this or not say this. You get to decide if you want to go to the gym or not, or if you want to work out at home, or who you want to spend your time with. You would much rather, uh, if you would much rather complain about all the negative things in your life, you're going to end up with more negative things in your life. So once in a, um, I know it's super off, you know, personal situation about not feeling good enough, about not feeling like um, I, I've been where I needed to be and then I drifted away and then I felt guilty about it. So maybe you've maybe you've gained t- five pounds, maybe you've gained 10 pounds, maybe you are not in the shape that you used to be in. Maybe you've let life and stress completely overwhelm you. I know what that feels like. But the one word, desperate, that you might be feeling, you feel as if everyone is looking at your face or looking at your body or looking at the decisions you're making. And you continue to try to you know, do things to make things better. But what good is that doing to try to mask things for yourself? No, get away from those things. Get into a a headspace and a heart space where you feel empowered, where you feel encouraged, where you can go do something about the things that you're not happy with. If you're not happy with the shape that you're in, get active. Find an accountability partner. Reach out to me. I would love to support you. Be a part of something bigger. Trust me, it's when you reach out and that you are... um, you, and rather of complaining that you take action, that you're going to be able to get someplace. So my advice, take care of yourself. Start taking care of yourself. Invest in yourself because you are completely worth it. You are the only one that is gets to be you. So why not treat the world and treat yourself to a happy, fulfilling life? If you don't like something about yourself, change it. You have the ability to do that. And then if you can't change it, accept it. Because if you can't change it, there's nothing you can do about it. And why put energy and, and, um, and thoughts and everything into things that you can't change. You are who you are and that makes you beautiful. And if you are, the sooner you can accept the the quirkiness of you, the, the love of you, the more you'll be able to love other people as well. But if there are things that you wanna change about yourself that you are able to change, do it. There's no one holding you back but you. Number three, your job is making you miserable. Speaking firsthand, my old job um, took a toll on me. Um, I I love the school. I love what I did. Um, I but it just wasn't one of those things that um, it was when I first got into it. I was into serving, 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 and it was it's something that I was constantly giving to somebody else and never coming back to myself and not. Um, you know, filling my own bucket at all. So it was just emotionally and physically draining. I gained the most weight that I've ever gained in my life in that first couple of years of this job. And what I re- really came to realize was my frustrations and my um, and my lack of energy and all those kinds of things were coming from my overexertion in other areas. I was living an unbalanced life and I let my job make me miserable. 
that is not worth it, right? Remember that beauty comes from within. And if you feel like crap, then when you look in the mirror, you're going to see crap. And that's just the way it works. But my advice is if you're not happy with where you're at, it's not worth it. It's not worth the money in the world. It's not worth your, it's not worth the cost of your happiness. It's not worth the negative feelings that you have with your family. It's not worth those things. If you need a job, get a job, but find something that works for you and your family. Find something that, um, you know, creates, positivity in your heart. It helps you live life as you want to live it. As weird as it may sound, all the positive things you that are great about your job, you can find positive qualities in everything that you do. So instead of complaining about something that's going on, find more balance in your life. Look for the positive things. When you come home from a hard day at work, look for the grateful things that you had that day. What are the blessings that you've had for the day? Tell yourself every day you will find a job with the same positive qualities that you want and more. But by doing this, you're going to attract more positivity in your life. You're going to find more opportunities in your current situation that are blessings in your day. And you'll be able to, uh, you know, not be as miserable in this situation. Number four, your relationship has lost its spark. Might be a reason why you're not feeling so pretty. Well, our significant other play a big role in our feeling beautiful nonsense. You know why? Well, because we want to look good and we want to attract people. It's the truth. We want to, we have that, you know, brainwashed society, remember, uh, that making making us feel like we need to look good or look a certain way. And your husband or your wife is, is definitely something that you want to look good for. When you have your relationships in life, you have a relationship with God, you have a relationship with your spouse, and then you have a relationship with your children. So why not we want to being a part of that positive relationship and loving your spouse as a, as a good thing. Maybe you, um, you know, you want to be all put together. Maybe made sure your legs were shaved, your nails are done, your hair was done, your teeth are brushed, your flawless, is, your makeup is flawless. You cared way more about your appearance than he does. And in fact, my husband tells me all the time, "Why do you put on makeup? I hate when you do your makeup." And I'm like, "Because I want to look good." And he's like, "But you look fine the way it is." Find somebody that does that for you. So if every day, you know, if somebody's trying to make you feel bad, it's not worth the time. If somebody is trying to make you feel um, uncomfortable in the skin that you're in, tell them to buzz off, right? It's you need to work on relationships. They're going to have a positive heart that are going to help you love who you are and the skin that you're in, but yet push you out of your comfort zone a little bit to always keep improving. When we get, um, there's a difference between you know, making you feel bad about yourself. And there's a, and there's a difference between, um, you know, helping you be a better person. So keep, that's a, that's a fine line and it's balance, but keep that in thought. So my, my advice, get yourself together, meaning put on some makeup, put on some cute clothes, do something that makes you feel good, makes you feel positive, makes you, uh, you know, if you don't want to do your hair and it's all messy bun all the time, you know, maybe get all dolled up and go out on the town with your girls or with your husband and think about how, um, you know, that might spark some, some love, some, some things. Do something that, and if it's not getting all dolled up, maybe it's just getting in comfy jeans and, and a t-shirt and, you know, going for a walk with a husband. Maybe it's, you know, doing something that, lights your fire, lights, builds your confidence and doing something that makes you feel good so that you can feel good with your spouse as well. So anytime you can do a confidence booster like that, it's a good thing. Number five, your life consists of nothing that makes you happy. (laughs) Now, isn't that a depressing statement? Uh, But there are millions of moms out there right now that live for their kids. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Like that is what I said. They live for their kids. I love my children, but I'm not going to live for my children. However, I do want to live for myself. I want to, the one relationship that I'm going to have for the rest of my life is me. The one relationship that we talked about a little earlier is the one that you have with yourself and your maker. You are the only person you're going to always live the rest of your life with. So you should have the best relationship with yourself. The second best relationship you should have is with your spouse. Your kids are going to move on someday. Your kids are going to grow up and create their own life. So when we live for our kids, when we put all of our time and our identity and our our emotions on our children, that's not necessarily a fair thing to them, but it's also not a fair thing to yourself because what happens when they move out? What happens when their needs are met and they move on to with a new life with their own friends, with their own family, with their own moving on? So, you know, you have to live for yourself. You have to love who you are and live your life um, on repeat. Wake up early. You know, many of us are kind of caught in that motion of like mom life and um, you you kind of just are living in the rut of life. And so you get up early, you get kids ready for school, you get them out the door, you deal with this crap, you deal with that crap, you're in traffic, you're out of traffic, you're going through life like a zombie sometimes and just running the schedule. And then maybe the schedule is running you. But you know, 
If you've convinced yourself that you're happy doing this, you're probably also in a little bit of denial that you're not super happy with the way things are. You find yourself tired, you find yourself exhausted, you find yourself, you know, needing to, you know, a random, um, a random act of kindness sometimes is just when somebody takes care of something for you. And why not take care of yourself? Why not take care of who you are and know that your worth is in you and not in what you can do for other people? Do something for yourself today. It can be the most random thing in the world, like take an art class, take a dance class, go for a walk. Do something that gets outside of your comfort zone. Push yourself a little bit farther. If you don't want to spend money, you know, go for a walk or, um, you know, hang out with friends or do something that you don't have to go out and do anything. Maybe, you, um, maybe you're going to just take some peace and quiet and read a good book at the library for an hour, um, just getting away um, from where you're at. So realize that life is passing you by and that you're not any more or any less by just trying to um, be who you are. And God's created you as this perfect being. And the more you get to celebrate you, the more that you get to celebrate others because you'll ha- have your cup full so that you can pour into other people. So make a change today. Get into the action and go forward and do that. The sixth thing that's maybe making you feel not so pretty um, is that your inner circle can do more harm than good. You are the five people that you hang out with. And, you know, those people that you spend your time with, the people that are putting heart, you know, messages in, into your heart and your mind. And, and you start to feel like you are those people, like you, you spend time with those people. And those are the same ones that have... Um, with everything in your life. So while we've had, you know, our, I've had friends for a long period of time. I've also had friends for a short period of time that are, that who are want to be, you know, we can, um, if you ever had that friend that is always just kind of running off the mouth or, um, always saying something negative or just is always constantly talking, 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 like meaning they're always talking crap about someone or someone else, or, you know, you know, first off, that's it's not healthy for you or your friend for you to even listening to them. Like, don't let yourself get all that negative in your head. And second, it's not, not a friend you should want to be around either because they're probably talking about you on the other side as well. So coworkers who drag you down into their drama, stop, stop believing them, stop being a part of it. Just simply walk away. Someone in your inner circle, a family member, a coworker, a friend, um, who are maybe secretly envious of you. Maybe they're people that, you know, or maybe they're people that just, maybe you've got someone that popped into your head right now that you can say, yep, I know who that person is, right? We all have those people in our lives that are just are negative, constant negatives or um, people who are always talking the, the latest gossip or po- talking about the drama. I really try to cut myself off from those people. I really try to get myself out of the situation. They're toxic. They're people that put negative things into your heart and mind. And when you have negative things in your heart and mind, you attract more negativity into your life. So why be a part of that, right? And the last thing, the seventh thing that you can do um, is to don't sell you don't see all the positive things you do have so a lot of times we get so stuck in the comparison game we get so stuck in the negative things that are happening in our life our brain is naturally designed to look for the negative look for the things that are going to harm us or hurt us it's a protective mode but it also can be a restrictive mode i like to like i like to continue to say everyone is beautiful sure you may have not had those plump lips that she has or the cute um uh, eyebrows or the pretty makeup, but you know, you may be sure you don't aren't as skinny as someone else can be. But you know what? If you can focus on how the blessings that you do have, focus on the things that are amazing about you, and you focus on the the good and not the lack, the amazing qualities about you are going to shine even brighter. If you want more of the good, you have to focus on the good. So my advice to you today is learn to be grateful period. You are gorgeous. You are beautiful. You are so pretty. You have all kinds of amazing qualities about you. And you just have to believe those things. You have to let the positive outshine the negative. And you have to let the, you know, make a list of all the positives and things that you're super proud of in your life. And then go forward and tout those things, right? Is it the color of your hair? Is it your eyelashes? Is it your skin? Is it your personality? Is it your wittiness? Is it your, you know, biceps? Is it your whatever? Think of all the positive things that are happening in your life and be grateful for them. I've also have another great tip for this one is to write a, a great gratitude journal. Every morning when I wake up, I try to, you know, appreciate what God's given me and say thank you for the day. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for all of these blessings in my life. And then 
at the end of the day, I thank you for the things that, you know, that have happened in my life. Thank you for this time with my son. Thank you for this birthday party. Thank you for um, this job opportunity. Thank you for all of the things in my day that have happened that I'm so grateful for. Because when you have an attitude of gratitude, you're much more likely to have a positive attitude about the rest of your life. And the more you focus on the good, the more good comes into your world. So those are the seven things that you may be feeling ugly about and that you can, how you can fix them. I give a little bit of my advice, how I've overcome some of those things and how you can too. Thank you for listening today. I hope you've had enjoyed today's episode and that you come back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday here on Public House Media to make sure that you um, check in to Choose Your Eyes on any podcast. Make sure you hit subscribe. Thanks to Podbean for um, being out there and letting us spread our voice even farther. Thank you also to the Good God Company for sponsoring us and making sure that we can have um, so much more uh, positivity and, and uplifting content out into the world as well. So thanks again for joining me. If you love this podcast, if you are here and watching, thanks so much for listening. I lo- appreciate the hearts and likes and loves. Um, I would really, really super be honored if you would share this on your social media. If you're listening to the podcast version, take a screenshot, share it on your stories and check, tag me at KJP Meyer. Um, I would love to connect with you and, and be a part of um, of your life more than just in a podcast. Uh, God doesn't doesn't give you any more than you can handle. And sometimes it's just about being clear on what you want in life and listening to the positive information and being a part of something different that is going to help you um, have a better and up, more uplifting day. So if you are interested in getting connected, if you want to know more about how to improve your life, shoot me an email at chooseriseup at gmail.com or find me at chooseriseup.com and let's get connected. I want to work with you. I want to talk with you. I want to help you, support you to rise up out of your current situation and live your best life. So again, thanks for joining me today and I hope you have a blessed day and I will see you again here on Wednesday.